And when we're talking about Brexit, obviously much of the um, public uh, conversation has been about the future relationship between the UK and the EU, but at least as important on the assumption that Brexit takes place will be how the UK will be governed in a post-Brexit scenario. Um, and if we set that slightly in context, and please don't quote this figure with any authority, but as we all know, um, uh, Brexit will result, on the assumption that it takes place, in a return from Brussels to the UK of a large number of functions, which hitherto have been the subject of EU regulation. And in the Welsh context, uh, I was talking to a colleague yesterday who talked about 5,000 new functions for the uh, Welsh government to exercise. And the bulk of those in what are in what one might call um, the outdoor area. We're talking about agriculture, we're talking about environment, we're talking about fisheries and all that sort of area. Uh, about 90% of those 5,000 are there. So that clearly has very big implications um, for the Welsh government. But of course the reality is that uh, one of the reasons why, or primary reason perhaps, of why those functions were uh, dealt with uh, hitherto at the European level is that they're not easily exercisable uh, at um, uh, nation state level, let alone uh, at the level which in European terms regarded as regional level. And so the consequence of this is that while very many of those functions will be reverting to the Welsh Government and will be exercisable by the Welsh Government uh, with a relative degree of freedom, there will be a set of functions which will be um, exercisable by agreement between the various uh, uh, administrations of the UK. And so, as Joe has said, this takes us to the really important area of intergovernmental relations. And it is, I think, clearly the case that uh, since 1999, um, the focus um, of devolution has very much been on the setting up and the uh, operation of the various devolved administrations and focus perhaps unduly internally um, uh, within each of Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland about how the systems should work. And there has been relatively little uh, uh, consideration and development of how the various administrations should work together. And that is perhaps not uh, a tenable position going forward simply because we now have this new set of responsibilities um, coming back from Brussels which will need the <coughs> governments will need to work together and of course it is in this context that um, the uh, four governments have mandated a review of the memorandum of understanding and the existing system of intergovernmental relations and that is uh, a process which is ongoing. Um, it's a very interesting process because what it has thrown into sort of sharp focus is the differing constitutional assumptions which the different administrations uh, bring um, uh, to the table and those assumptions have to be made explicit. Um, so that, for example, the issue really is what is it legitimate for a devolved administration to be able to raise, in particular with the UK government? Um, and really the answer to this question is, well, what, what is devolution about? Is devolution about a special set of governance arrangements for each of the devolved territories with minimal implications for the conduct of business at the UK level? Or is it a, um, a, a more sophisticated uh, way of governing the UK 
Germany, which, as the Prime Minister said, uh, former Prime Minister? No. The, the Prime Minister <laughs> said, uh, is now conceived of as a family of nations, and the family needs to be talking to each other and working together. But of course, uh, and from our point of view with the Welsh Government, this is um, at one level um, uh, quite easy because we are simultaneously fiercely revolutionary but also committed to the future of the United Kingdom. Um, uh, that is a distinctive position. If you think about the position of the other administrations, that is not where they are. Scotland obviously has an aspiration for independence. Uh, Northern Ireland, when it's very difficult to, to express in short terms, how they, how they see their relationship to the UK. And of course, you then have a deeply ambivalent UK government so far as uh, uh, evolution is concerned. But so far as we are concerned, um, this is um, uh, uh, this question is a rather a neat example of what one might call the Lampedusa paradox. Um, remember um, uh, in uh, The Leopard, um, uh, the uh, novel um, uh, by Giovanni de Lampedusa, um, the young man explains to his very concerned um, uncle that um, for everything to remain the same, everything must change. And of course, from the Welsh government's point of view, if we want the union to uh, continue, everything about the union is to change. Its institutions, its culture, um, its processes to enable the governments to work together more effectively. And that's the, um, uh, the agenda on which we're developing. Uh, there, and it is fair to say that uh, there have been some developments internally, which have not really come out publicly, about establishing new mechanisms for intergovernmental relations. The difficulty, which is thrown into sharp focus by this morning, is how much those new mechanisms for intergovernmental working have been dependent on personal goodwill between the ministers involved. And the ministers presumably will now change. And so um, some of those uh, arrangements have been formalized in terms of memoranda of understanding or concordats and, uh, and others. And so from that point of view, we will be pressing when, for example, there is a new Secretary of State for uh, at DEFRA, for those institutions, uh, for our new intergovernmental um, uh, ministerial arrangements for the various four ministers to work together, that whoever comes in will have to be bound by those because, fortunately, we have managed to formalize those arrangements in, term, uh, in terms of, of uh, we have an intergovernmental arrangement in place. In other areas, where the four governments have need, uh, need, will need to work together, we haven't quite got to that stage yet. And it will be interesting to see if we have to start again from the beginning with new ministers to build up those relationships and, and, and get them formalized. But so the, the, the future then, um, in terms of uh, the Welsh government, is that we're getting, and of course, all of this is seen as a Brexit will take place. Um, we will, are getting a very significant accretion of new functions, but e uh, equally we will be needing to establish and press for the establishment of new intergovernmental relationships which enable the four administrations to work together on matters of common interest. <laughs>